The whole idea of Christianity is nothing more than sun worship. I mean, the sun is our risen Savior. Of course the sun is your risen Savior. God's sun is our... Well, you don't own the sun. Africa doesn't own the sun. So who owns the sun? Well, obviously God owns the sun. Well, then it's God's sun. And God's sun is the light of the world. Of course the sun's the light of the world. What, else, what the hell else lights the earth if it isn't the sun? So God's sun lights the world. He's the light of the world. He's our risen Savior. Of course it's your risen Savior. It doesn't rise, you're dead in six weeks. So wait till it don't come up. And you'll see it is your Savior. And the sun, the Egyptians said, the sun gives off energy. And energy is light. That's why you have, a life, you have the life of a battery. When the battery goes dead, it's no energy. So the Egyptians said the sun is pure energy. And it's giving its energy so that we might live. So God's sun is giving his life that you might live. Of course the sun is giving its life. It's giving its energy so that you can grow and the plants can grow. And once you begin to understand religion, where it comes from, the whole story of Jesus is nothing more than a metaphor. There was no Jesus. There was no Abraham, no Isaac, no Jacob. There was no Moses, no King Solomon. None of those people in the Bible ever lived. These are metaphors for something far deeper that the ancient writers were trying to tell you in a metaphor. There's a symbolic story. And if you don't get the symbolism, you will go for your whole life in trouble because you didn't know how to read the symbols. You don't know what's really going on behind the scenes. And that's what most people don't know anything about how this world really, in fact, works. But once you figure out how the courts work, education works, education is nothing more than a 12-step program. Let me give you an example. And the ancient Egyptian religion, one of the many different religions in Egypt, the ancient Egyptian religion of Horus. Horus was the sun in its rising. He was a god, god the sun. And Horus was spelled H-O-R-U-S. And Horus walked across the sky in 12 steps. It was a 12-step program. That's why alcoholics have a 12-step program. You have a 12-step program. You go to the first grade to the 12. It's a 12-step program. So from the 12-step program, they have finally taught you what to kiss and when, and how to get a yeah, and how to get a job, and what and who to and who to bow down to, and all that. So they taught you now, and now you can go out and get a job. It's the 12-step program, first to the 12th grade. What is that based on? Horus. Horus was our god, the the sun, the sun god in Egypt. He walked across the sky in 12 steps. Horus is the first step. Horus is the second step. Horus is the third step. When he got in the Horus of the sixth step, he was directly overhead. He was then called Horus, the most high God, because you don't get any higher than noon. So it's called high noon, because he's the most high. Why? Well, because after one o'clock, the sucker's going down. So, so he was the most high at 12 noon. And so Horus walks across his 12 steps. So we say the same thing today. Same thing. We have 12 Horuses. But instead of H-O-R-U-S, we make it H-O-U-R-S. becomes ours, changing the U and the R. Now it becomes 12 hours. No, it's 12 Horuses. And Horus represents light. The sun represents light. Light in Latin is Lucius. Lucius, when personified as a god, becomes Luke. And this is why I have Luke Skywalker. And he walks across the sky and meets his evil brother, Darth Vader, or and the Egyptian religion, Set. He was the god of darkness, the prince of darkness, was Set. Why? Because it got dark at sun Set. So the whole idea is that it's the whole world that we live in is based on Egypt, Mesopotamia, ancient Greece, ancient Rome. All of the stuff that we live in this world is based on ancient religions and cults and secret societies and Masonic orders, and the people of this world have no idea in the world what's going on. Christians think that they've got a, a, a corner on the truth, and they don't realize it's just worshiping the sun. Let me give you an example. We've got a couple of moments. Let me give you an example. I want to try and understand what I'm saying here. All of the religious concepts and ideas in Christianity and Judaism come from the northern hemisphere. We don't have anything in our Christianity or Judaism that comes from the, uh, from the Aztecs and the Mayas or the uh, Aborigines of Australia. All of our concepts and ideas come from the Northern Hemisphere. Very good reason. 
because the whole thing of religion in Judaism and Christianity is astrology. It's based on the stars. That's what God is. Ask any kid where God is. He's out there. That's right, in the stars. That's what the Christianity and Judaism is based on, the stars. <clears throat> and so, on the first day of summer, the very first day of summer, the sun is as high in the northern hemisphere as it's going to go. It's not going any further north than the first day of summer. Each day after the first day of summer, it begins to move one degree southward every day. It's so slight, you'll never notice it. But, six, but 90 degrees later, or 90 days later, which is three months later, it's halfway down. So when he was high in the northern hemisphere, he started summer. And summer begins in the constellation of Leo. He was the Lion King, like Disney's Lion King. The Lion King is the sun in the constellation of Leo that begins summer. The Lion King the lion of the tribe of Judah. It's Leo, the constellation of Leo in summer. The sun is hot, so he's the lion king, Leo, the constellation. Now, 90 degrees later, 90 days later, he is falling. So now it's called fall. Yeah, because he was really hot, now he's falling. So he's not that hot anymore. So now we call it fall, because he's falling. What is the symbol for fall if it isn't Scorpio, the backbiter? And this is why in the old ancient world, when a scorpion bites you, they have two stingers, one on top of the other, and when they, when they hit you, it looks like two lips. And then so the ancient people said, you just got the kiss of death. He just kissed you off. Because you just got bit by a scorpion, and that's the kiss of death. That's why the mafia gives you a kiss of death. That's where it comes from. So Scorpio is the backbiter. He's the one that goes behind your back and rats on you, and he's the backbiter and causes you to die. And that's what Judas was, the backbiter, Scorpio, because Scorpio begins fall. So Jesus, who was the son of God, the God's son, the light of the world, he was the lion king in summer, but now he is falling. The sun goes all the way down south until it hits what is called the winter solstice. And that's on December 22nd, the sun hits the lowest point on the sky in the south on December 22nd. It's called the winter solstice, uh, the beginning of winter. And for three days, the United States Navy can both show and explain it to you that the sun comes up for three days, 22nd, 23rd, and 24th, on the same degree. It doesn't go any further south, and it doesn't come back north. But on the same degree that it was on on December 22nd, the sun rises the next two days, 23rd and 24th, on the same degree. So the ancient people said that the sun was alive. He was the, the, the lion of the tribe of Judah, Leo. He got the kiss of death from Scorpio. And now he is three days. He's not moving at all. So therefore, he's in his tomb for three days. Then on the 25th of December, the sun moves one degree northward. And you can calculate that as the Navy does. You can calculate it's very slight, but if you got the right instruments, you can see the sun move one degree northward. Therefore, it came back to life. So now we celebrate God's son being born again. He's born again. When? On December 25th. So we celebrate Christmas or Christ Mass. But as the sun moves back toward the northern hemisphere, it crosses over the equator at spring because he was dead in winter now he's springing back to life so as he comes back to life and crosses over the equator there was a celebration called the Passover because the Sun has passed over the equator coming back to the northern hemisphere and so today we even say when someone dies we say grandmother passed last night grandfather passed away or they passed on but always past was associated with death. So God's Son has passed over the equator. So once a year, the, uh, around the world, the Jews celebrate the Passover, which is nothing more than the Son passing over the equator. And Christians, of course, cannot do that because that's, that's Jewish and they wouldn't want to have anything to do with the Jewish celebration. So Christians have a totally different celebration. They call it the resurrection of God's Son. And so they go out on, 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 the, you know, on the Passover and go out and have something called the Easter sunrise service. 
So you actually have Christians going out and waiting for the sun to come up for something called a sunrise service. I mean, what is that all about? Christians are worshiping the sun? And, and then when you start looking at how the word S-O-N and S-U-N are interchangeable in, in Christianity, and God knows there's a lot of information on that. So that basically you boil down Christianity as some worship as astrology, Old Testament as astrology,